Okay, so uh, for this topic, functions and graph, this is the second type of uh, functions and graph that you need to know. So this type is called graphical solution. Basically, we'll be utilizing a graph that is drawn to scale to solve certain equation or to answer certain type of question. Okay, so uh, a typical question is always answered on a graph paper. Okay, so usually it will come with a uh, equation. Okay, so I'm going to use practice question one to show a bit of idea and and uh, what are the basic type of question and how are you expected to show your answer. Okay, so uh, it will, let's look at practice question one. So practice question one starts with a table. The table is related to this equation. So usually in this table, there will be some unknown. So it's very much like what you learn in the low uh, set two graph. So you, for part one, uh, your job is to find the unknown value that's in the table. So I assume this one should be quite easy for most of you. It shouldn't be too new to you. However, at your presentation right should be done on the graph paper. So in this case, right, uh, so the graph is here. Okay, so by right, you should, uh, I will have presented my answer here. So this is my equation. And then I'm supposed to find the value of P. The value of P corresponds to X equal to two. So I will have presented my answer here. So in order to get P, I will have put the two into the equation. So that's how I get the 1.5. Okay. And same thing here. Uh, Q correspond to X equal to 3.5. So in order to get Q, okay, it will be 3.5 plus 3 over 3.5 minus 2. So it will be it should be presented in on the graph paper. Okay, like the instruction said, answer the whole of this question on a sheet of graph paper. So your teacher will not be marking the question paper. So everything should be nicely presented on the graph paper. So your graph has to be very neat and proper. Okay, so that is the part, part, part A, how we present the unknown value. So we'll present it on the graph. Okay, then after that, we're supposed to draw the graph. Usually they will have given you a scale to follow. So please follow closely to the scale or else you will get marks deducted. The usual drawing of a graph will be something like three marks. But in some questions, they don't need you to draw the graph. In some questions, they, the graph will be presented to you, so you are not required to draw. So for such questions, the, the idea is they didn't want, they didn't, they are not interested to test you on the drawing. Okay, but for O level, there will always be one graph that happens in email paper too, something like this. Okay, so anyway, to facilitate, I already draw the graph. So the graph is shown. So if you look, how I usually mark uh, is I will mark whether the student label the axis or not. Okay, so that's the most basic. And do follow the scale. Okay, then subsequently for part C, if you look, for part C uh, from the graph, I'm supposed to state the minimum value and the corresponding x. So I got two things to answer for part C. So where do I answer? I will answer on the graph paper, part C. And where do I get the lowest value? Okay, so for, for your case, you use your ruler. Okay, so you use your ruler. The lowest value of Y, you must always indicate with dotted line. You indicate with dotted line. If you don't indicate with dotted line, nobody knows uh, where you get the value. So you got to indicate where you get the value. So this is 1.567. So it's around 1.7. So this is how I will indicate. So around 1.7. Okay, so there's a bit, there's a bit of discrepancy. So if you gave a 1.75, that will also be okay. I think, yeah, I think it looks more like 1.75. Okay, 
So you use your ruler. I'm using iPad pencil. So I hope I don't get any discrepancy like this. Okay, so this one is my answer for part C. So you can label. You can label that this is actually part C. So people know that you actually read this dotted line to tell the value. So the dotted line is a uh, working. So when you answer part C, don't just write a uh, 1.45. Don't just write a uh, 1.75. Nobody knows which is which. So make sure you answer the question. So you answer the question, minimum Y. That means the lowest Y coordinate that you can find is 1.45. And the corresponding X is 1.75. So again, I answer on the graph paper and the answer is actually indicated with a dotted line. So that is uh, a, a way to present answer. So don't be lazy, don't skip the dotted line. Okay, so that's done, part C. Part D is a typical question. Part D is something that is, uh, they will typically be asking. So you're supposed to draw a tangent to calculate the gradient at x equal to three because this is a curve. So a curve doesn't have a thick gradient throughout it, unlike a straight line. So if it's a straight line, of course, it's got a fixed gradient throughout all the points. So in if I would like to find the gradient of a curve, I need to find uh I need to draw a tangent. So in this case, the tangent is at x equal to three. So this is the the point that I'm interested in. So look for the points where the x is equal to three. So this is a bit difficult to draw the tangent. Okay, so I'll, I'll try my best to draw. It, it's actually more difficult to draw with iPad pencil. It will straighten in a while. Something like this. Okay, so for you, you draw. Uh, it's not a matter of drawing as close to the line. It's a matter of balancing the, balancing the tangent. Okay, so in order to understand this, right, okay, so this is the, the, the point. This is the point that I'm going to balance. So I'm going to draw a tangent at x equal to 3. I try to balance, a, you think about balancing a pencil. So what is a good tangent and what is a bad tangent? So for example, I show you. So if you draw something like this, Okay, so roughly maybe one centimeter away from the the balance point. The balance point is the 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 point that you wanted to draw attention. So in my case, it's equal to three. So from the point, uh, so roughly one centimeter, you check the depth. If you check this depth, the blue color part here, it it is quite equal. So this one is considered a good tension. So if let's say you got something like this and you try to draw a tension, okay, so I, I try to draw you a bad tension. This is a bad tension. So why is it a bad tension? Because you, if you take roughly one centimeter, then you compare the height. You compare the height, the blue color height you realize that it's a bit imbalanced. One side is higher. So in that case, right, this part is what we'll call a bad tangent. So a bad tangent will give you a, a, a gradient that is very off. So this one is considered a good tangent. So a good tangent will give you a gradient that is very close to the correct answer. So when you we wanted a good tangent, it means that the your straight line is very balanced. Okay, so uh, so that is the idea of a good tension. So currently the one that I draw, okay, I'm not very confident because I'm using iPad pencil. Okay, so at the end of it, right, what what do you do? Okay, you got to indicate the straight line very clearly and you need to get uh, some coordinates. So you got to get some proper coordinates on the tension. So you need to read very, very carefully. One, two, two point two five. So I'm trying to read very carefully. So I'm I'm trying to get two nice coordinates. So this part. 
okay, is a 3.5. So a very common mistake for from students is they didn't read the coordinate very carefully. So sometimes it's actually not so easy to read. So I'm trying to read off here. Okay, I don't have a ruler. If I have if I have a ruler, I think it's uh, more direct. So 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. So that's around 2.3. So my idea is I need to get two coordinates as on the tangent. So these two coordinates, you please read carefully. A uh, common mistake is people read the coordinate wrongly. So once I get this, how do I present? So that I already draw it. So the question says, by drawing a tangent, find the gradient. So how do I present it? Again, I'm going to be presenting it on the graph paper. So I go to, I'm going to indicate what are the coordinates that I'm using. So I'm using 2.25, 1.5, and I'm using 3.5 and 2.3. So I will indicate the coordinates that I'm using. So please double check that you read correctly. I also very scared I make a mistake. So from here, I we will perform the gradient formula. So perform the gradient formula. Okay, by now you should be very good with the gradient formula. So the gradient formula 1.5 minus 2.3. Okay, so in this case, I get 1.07. We put it at 3SF. We put it at 3SF. So if, let's see, let, let's take a look. Oh, this question, uh, I never put the gradient. Mm, okay, let me do a quick. Three over three square. So I guess six over nine. I think my gradient is a little bit off. Okay, my gradient is a little bit off. Okay, uh, the correct gradient should be around zero point zero point six seven. Okay, let's see. Did I read the coordinate wrongly? Okay, one possibility sometimes the coordinate can be read wrongly. Okay, another possibility will be a, I calculated wrongly. Oh yeah, I really calculated wrongly. It's supposed to be, yeah, I made a careless mistake in the calculation. So it's 1.5. Uh, this part here is 3.5. So I wrote wrongly here. So the correct gradient will be around 0.67. Okay, so I cheated using some differentiation. Uh, when you are in SEC4, you will learn something called differentiation, and that will help you to cheat the gradient of tangent. Yeah, so I actually get 0 0.64. The correct one is 0 0.67, so actually this is considered quite close. So that's how I present. That's how I present. Um, A gradient of tension. Okay, so that is one challenge for some students. Another challenge for some students, right, is using the graph to draw, using the graph, and you will need to draw a straight line to solve a certain equation. So th there's only one method for, for this type of question. Okay, the method will be from the equation that you are supposed to solve, The method is from the equation to be solved. You need to be manipulated until you get the curve equal to a function. So you need to do the manipulation until you hit your graph and then you will equal to something. So this something is the straight line. It's the straight line to be drawn. The method is very direct. It's just one method, but a lot of students have issue with this.
the, the, the reason why, because uh, the manipulation, this, the manipulation is a challenging part. So you look at the method. So this is a fixed method. So from the equation, you got to manipulate to get the curve. So when you are doing the manipulation, you need to make sure you have your curve in mind. So your aim is to get your curve. So when you are doing the manipulation, bear in mind, you must manipulate until you get your curve. So, and how are you going to present it? Again, you got to be presenting it on your graph paper. So now you got more space ready. So you, what is the equation that you're supposed to solve? So the equation that you're supposed to solve will be x plus 3 over x minus 2 equal to minus x plus 4. Okay, so I'm supposed to solve this equation and I'm supposed to manipulate until I get my graph, my curve. But do you realize this is already your curve? This part, this whole thing is already your curve. So in a way, you do not need to manipulate. You already gotten your curve. So this one is like y. So the curve is represented by y. So you change the whole expression to y. y equal to minus x plus 4. So that will be the straight line that you will need to draw. So the question says, you will need to draw a suitable straight line. So that will be the straight line that I need to draw. So how on earth am I, am I supposed to draw this straight line? Uh, that will be your step one work. So in your step one work, if you want to draw a straight line, you've got to come up with a table. So same thing here, you come up with a table. You show the table. Uh, so if I know that it's going to be a straight line, I do not need a huge table. So don't waste your time on a huge table. So I will just get maybe three points. And what will be the points that I'm getting? I look at the axis. So I got zero, one, two. Okay, so maybe I just put a zero, I get a zero, four, one, I put a, I got a three, two, I got a two. So from here, I actually got three points that should be sufficient for me should be somewhere here. I, I couldn't see very clearly. So two, two, somewhere like this. So do I think, please draw a proper straight line. I don't think mine is very proper. Yeah, you see, mine is not very proper. So make sure you draw. I think it's easier if you just draw, use your ruler and you just draw a straight line. Okay, so I, I'm drawing a very slanted one. Please draw a proper one. Okay, so when you draw the straight line already, make sure you label. And don't stop there. Because your aim is to solve. Your aim is to find the value of x. So where are you going to get the value of x? You're going to get the value of x from the intersection. So it is from the intersection of the curve and the straight line. So you'll be something like this, dot, 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 dot. Okay, dot, 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 dot. Then you get the two answers. So don't forget to present the two answers. Okay, so uh, the solving part, later on, uh, we got a practice question. We got some a, a couple of practice questions that, that focus on this method. But this is the generic thing that you will need to, to uh, know how to do. Okay, and the technique of answering on the graph paper neatly indicate your equation of the graph, indicate the equation of the straight line, indicate the x-axis, y-axis, and all the relevant dotted line. So I will say this question one is a very basic one. 